dikes strengthen the walls against the water for the flood is coming. But you can't build dikes big and fast enough when the Yangtze is running wild. Here at Hankow, the Han River flowing into the Yangtze has hurled its swollen waters far and wide, overwhelming cities and villages for hundreds of miles. One million people have lost their homes, 100,000 their lives. Stupendous in sheer magnitude. Scenes of devotion, scenes of pity along the length of China's great and terrifying river, China's flood river. China is said to be among the world's most badly hit when it comes to flooding. The Great Yangtze River, which has been one of nature's greatest gifts to people of China, has bedeviled the people with life-threatening floods, killing and displacing more than 50 million people in a single year. As a measure to curb the menace and save lives and property, the Chinese government set out to build one of the most ambitious projects the country has ever taken. All hell broke loose when the project was announced. The project was met with much criticism on the political and scientific front, both internally and externally. After 87 years of stiff debate, the project was finally built. Today, it is one of China's most iconic projects, summoning the attention of the entire world. This is a story rich in history. This is a story of how China became the world's biggest hydroelectric power generator. This is a story of the three gorges now. The Yangtze River is one of the longest and largest rivers in Asia. This river is said to be responsible for many floods that has occurred in China. Among such great floods are the floods of 1931, 1998, 2010, and 2020. These floods have changed the lives of many Chinese citizens living across the river. As a measure taken by the Chinese government to curb this menace and to save the lives and property of people living along the Liangtze River, they built levees. But what are levees? And how formidable were they against the floods? Well, levees have been in existence since 2500 BC. Many countries have constructed levees as a measure of defense against the floods. Ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia all constructed levees to protect them against the floods. Another country that is mostly known for the construction of levees in the Netherlands. Ever heard of the saying, how God created the earth, the Dutch built the Netherlands? Well, I did a whole video covering this. You can check it out by clicking this tab at the top. So these levees are some form of mini hills or walls that are constructed along the banks of these rivers and their purpose is to protect the inland from flooding when the rains come in. In the United States, in situations where a stream or river separates two cities, each city is responsible for protecting themselves against the floods. And so when one city builds a levee, the other one has to also build the levee. Now what would usually happen is one city tends to build one higher than the other city. Therefore, when the rains come in and there's a flood, the flood tends to have twice as much damage to the city that has a lower levee because then the water that was supposed to have spread to both sides of the river bank tends to spread to one side and that side tends to suffer even more from the destruction of the flood than it would have if it hadn't been built at all. In situations where consensus is built, this problem is usually overcome. In the case of China, these levees served as a good way of protecting them against the floods. For several years, they would not experience any form of flooding. But after a while, the rains became more severe and the floods were happening more frequently. The levees were not protecting them against the floods anymore. This called into question the efficacy of these levees and how well they were protecting them against the floods. In 1931, another flood occurred. Now, this one was more severe. They said to have flooded over 30,000 square miles around the Yangtze River. It is said that the floods led to the death of 3.7 million people and displacing close to 40 million people in one report. Another report said over 52 million people were displaced by this flood. Now to put in perspective, the population of Texas is 30 million. 
and the population of Ohio is 10 million. So this flood led to the displacement of every single person living in Texas and Ohio combined. That was the sheer scale of the flood. The Chinese government knew they had to do something to curb this situation. They built even bigger levees and in place several other measures to make sure that these floods do not occur again. In subsequent years, several other floods occurred. In 1954, a similar flood occurred, killing up to 30,000 people. The Chinese government realized that just levies or some other minor measures were not going to solve the problem. They needed to take a bold step. In 1994, China's biggest engineering project had kicked off. The construction of the Three Gorges Dam had begun. Now, this wasn't the first time this dam was thought of. It was thought of in 1919 by one of China's big and most powerful politicians, Sun Yat-sen. He did not live to see his dreams manifest. His successor, Chiang Kai-shik, came in to make sure that this dream was realized. He brought in an American engineer by name of John L. Savage to survey the peninsula and the valleys across which they would build the dam. He took drastic measures to make sure that this dream was realized and that lives and property were saved. Chiang even sent dozens of Chinese engineers to the United States for training just to build this dam. Well, this project was aborted due to the Chinese Civil War. After the Chinese Communist Party took over, the dreams of building this dam had come back. One other Chinese politician who is so respected amongst the Chinese people, Chairman Mao Zedong, popularly known as Chairman Mao, endorsed the project, writing about it in his poems. He wrote, Sails doth the wind fail, the tortoise and the snake lay still. Great plans doth we fulfill. A bridge flies from south to north. The deep chasm becomes a thoroughfare henceforth. To my west shall stand a great stone wall, and hold the clouds and rains of Mount Wu as they fall. A great lake shall rise in the high gorge. He ordered for some feasibility studies to be done for the construction of this project. But then again, the project was cut short because of the Chinese Revolution. The unrest had made it impossible to carry on with the project. In the 1970s, his successor, Deng Xiaoping, came back with the idea again. This time around, it had some momentum but it was strongly opposed by several people, both internally and externally. Hydrologists, intellectuals, environmentalists, all pointed to its human and environmental costs, from mass relocation of residents to threats of geological hazards. Also pointed out environmental damages and loss of archaeological sites, which would happen if this project was continued. After several years of debate, the government was ready to go on with the project, in spite of all the debates. They put forward the idea before their legislature and was put to a vote. Two-thirds of the legislature voted in favor of the project, even though one-third of it did not vote in favor of it. And so they continued with the project. In 1993, sword was cut for the construction of this project. The specific location for the construction of this dam was between three gorges or valleys. These are the Kutan Gorge, the Wu Gorge, and the Zeling Gorge, which is why the dam is said to be the Three Gorges Dam, because it's being built between three valleys. In 2006, the dam was completed. It was a massive structure built in the form of a straight line. The dam was 7,660 feet long and had a maximum height of 607 feet. Put this in perspective, this is like two times the length of the Golden Bridge in California and about 60 stories in height. 
the average amount of water going through the dam per year reaches up to 500 billion cubic meters. The construction of the dam was said to have cost the Chinese government 37 billion US dollars. But there was still so much controversy. The construction of this dam did not come without many controversies and even after the construction. It was said that up to 1.3 million people had to be relocated to make way for the construction of this project. These people had to find new ways of living and making ends meet. They had to live behind their farmlands and all of these farmlands were also flooded for the construction of this project. Now, this is how the river looked in 1987 before its construction and this is how it now looks in 2006 after its construction they said that the dam still does not solve the problem of flooding as many cities along the bank of this river keeps getting flooded every single year according to geologists this dam is said to be responsible for the many landslides that happen in cities located near the river but in terms of the engineering, how does the dam work? In spite of all the good things that has been said about the dam, it's still being criticized. So what is the catch? Well, the dam is situated upstream in the Yangtze River, protecting all the cities downstream from flooding. Now, the water held upstream is held in a reservoir and is released through the sluice gates to allow for water to ease out slowly, thereby protecting the cities downstream of this river. Major among the cities downstream include Wuhan, Nanjing, and Shanghai. During the dry season, the reservoir's water level is kept at a maximum of 175 meters to optimize electricity generation at adjoining hydropower plants. Before the summer, the water level is gradually lowered to make way for the rains that will come in the next few months. The lowering of the water levels is able to create up to 22 billion cubic meters of water space which is able to fill up to 9 billion olympic size swimming pools as big as this may sound it still is nothing compared to the water that comes in during the rainy season in china said fan xiao a chinese geologist and longtime critique of the dam so in terms of flood control it is said that the dam has not controlled flooding Floods used to occur before the construction of the dam. And after the construction of the dam, the floods continue to occur. But there are some high sides to it. By the construction of this dam, China has become the world's biggest hydroelectric power generating country. Well, or should we say power conversion country? You see, according to the first law of thermodynamics, which is the law of energy conservation, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but rather be converted from one form to the other. You see, when the water is in the reservoir, it has potential energy. But when it's let through the slowest gates, it gains kinetic energy. Now, this kinetic energy is obtained by the transformation of the potential energy to kinetic energy and once it goes through the gates it turns the turbines of the generators and this causes kinetic energy to be converted to electrical energy which is how the energy is produced but for the purpose of this communication let's just call it generation after the completion of the dam in 2006, the hydroelectric power generation part of the dam was not fully completed until 2012. The total energy generated was 22,500 megawatts of energy, making it the biggest in the world, even bigger than the Grand Coulee Dam in the United States. The biggest energy capacity dam in the United States is the Grand Cool Dam with a generating capacity of 6,809 megawatts. The Hoover Dam is said to have a generating capacity of just more than 2,000 megawatts. The Three Gorges Dam beats both the Hoover Dam and the Grand Cool Dam combined twice. But there are some fun facts about this dam. 
According to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, this dam is said to be one of the very few elements on the Earth that is visible from space because of its sheer size. NAM is also responsible for a small tweak in the rotation of the Earth. During its full capacity, the dam can hold up to 42 billion tons of water. With that much weight, the moment of inertia of the Earth is increased. For what we know about moment of inertia, it largely depends on the velocity and mass. With the increase in the mass on one side, the moment of inertia increases, decreasing the general velocity of the Earth's rotation. Hence, we we'll would begin to experience longer days and longer nights. Uh, but not to worry, the, this is just a fraction of a second. I hope this has been an interesting episode of the Virtual Science Project World Talk. Next, we are going to India. India is said to have one of the most polluted air in the world. Toxic brew in much of the air over India, sparked by everything from farmers burning their fields to industrial pollution. The 20 million residents of New Delhi are breathing smog. The third most polluted city in the world. It is said that up to 2 million people die per year of respiratory diseases owed to the polluted air in India. Air quality in India has been of major concern to many international organizations, including the World Bank and the World Health Organization. In the last decade, India has taken pragmatic and drastic steps to change this situation. They have put in place education, policies, and mega projects to curb this problem. We'll go deep into that in the next episode. Subscribe and hit the like button and I'll talk to you on another occasion. Adios.